Last one. Um, now we're going to get into vertical and horizontal lines. So when graphing vertical and horizontal lines, um, I think you guys don't need to create a table of values, because I think once I teach this, I hope that you'll be able to replicate this, um, replicate this yourselves. However, to kind of explain how we get to horizontal and vertical lines, um, I'm going to use a table of values. And so if I was going to graph, let's say I wanted to graph both of these. Now, for the y equals, this one actually isn't that bad, because we can replicate this and slope-intercept form. Obviously, you see there's no x here. So therefore, m has to be 0, and b equals negative 3. All right? But a lot of students have trouble when they're trying to compute the slope when the slope is at 0, right? Because it's like change in y, change of x, slope. I don't really understand how that kind of works. And over here, you can't even write this in slope-intercept form. So what I'm going to do to explain these is just use a table of values. Now, when we did a table of values, on your functions today, you guys chose values for x, right? You chose, or I'm sorry, you didn't choose value. I gave you values of x, and then you plugged them in to find values for y. Yes? Because if it was 1, it would be x. It would be x minus 3. The equation is not x minus 3. The equation is negative 3. So that has to be 0, because 0 times x would be 0. That is your b. This is your b. This is in slope intercept form. You only have your value of b. That's it. You don't have an x. There's no number in front of x here. There's no x. Why is there no x? Because it's being multiplied by 0. So your slope is 0. What 5? This is two separate problems. OK? All right. Um, I, I can't keep on helping you out after school. So um, when we're getting back into this, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have your two equations, OK? You have these two sets. And now if we're going to be creating this table of values, let's go and look at a table, all right? Rather, if I'm not giving you these values, I'm saying, hey, x is equal to 5. 5, 5, all right? So if we look at where x equals 5, that's right here. It doesn't matter what values I chose, choose for y. x is always going to equal 5. So that produces a vertical line. If I'm going to go ahead and graph this, you, know, you can choose your values for x just like we did today. But what does y always equal? Negative 3. It doesn't matter what values I choose. y is always equal to negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So what I want you guys to understand is when you, have, when you have x equals 5, that is just a vertical line at the x value 5. When you have y equals negative 3, that is a horizontal line at the y value negative 3. Okay? So that's where horizontal lines come from. I'm just showing you which graph is which. That's it.